Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we're going to go through AP Bank Reconciliation. Uh, Lunch and Learns are shortened versions of our regular training. And so we won't go into a large amount of detail, but we'll give you a little taste of what happens when you use the system for reconciling transactions. There's two types of ways to reconcile your bank account in Epicor. One is that you can reconcile manually, and the other is that you can reconcile using the electronic interface. Because the electronic interface is specific to the bank feeds that you will get, we'll just touch on it, but we won't really get into it for this Lunch and Learn. So you need to set up your uh, application appropriately in order to do the bank reconciliation. The unique thing about this is that it can either be set up in accounts payable or accounts receivable because both interface with the bank reconciliation feature. You'll need to set up the electronic interface using the maintenance uh, tab, and that normally is done between IT and your bank because it requires uh, flat file feeds to and from depending on if you're doing receivables or payables. You do need to set up a bank branch code and you need to set up a bank account. It's suggested these days that you have at least one bank branch code that's called 01 and or one just plain one and that bank branch code description be called default. Uh, as the system has as Epicor has progressed through the various uh, revisions and upgrades they are starting to require this code in several places, so it's best to have that started now uh, on your system. So in order to do this, uh, you'll have to go to your bank reconciliation settings. There's a pod there and select the modules that will be included in bank reconciliation. Add your interface data, and those are all set up parts of the system, you can find uh, some of those instructions in your help screen. So now that we've set up our system, let's sit back and enjoy our coffee and maybe it's soda at lunchtime and reconcile a bank statement. So bank reconciliation is performed only in accounts payable. So even though we set up some stuff in receivables, we only do this process in accounts payable. Once a bank statement is started for a particular bank account, only the user that started it can perform any actions in that statement, including deleting it. Uh, any unposted statement can be deleted at any time, and the process started again, even by a different user. So I'm going to switch over to Epicor, and you notice that I have I've been practicing with several different bank statements here, and I have one open for February of 2022 as an example. You'll notice here that the bank statement is posted. Once your bank statement is ready to go at the end of the period, you can uh, post the statement, lock everything in, and go from there. So to add a statement, again, it's just the circle plus at the top right of the screen. I've started this bank statement for our example this afternoon. So I'm going to select the for the statement header what bank account I'm going to use. There is a drop-down box for any banks that you have set up in your system. The statement number will be automatically generated when this is a new statement. And the description will be whatever you want it to be. In this case, I typed in February of 2022. If there are any transactions that for some reason post from the statement, this is what will show up on your general ledger. You can pick your opening date and your closing date. Normally, the opening date would be the first day of the period. So it would it would be, for example, February 1st of 2022. But you can put any opening date in here to start out with, and you can actually change open the uh, opening amounts accordingly. Once you get into the habit of reconciling your bank statement every month, your bank statement, your opening date will be the first of the next period. Um, if you do your bank statement in the middle of the month, 
you can even adjust it so that um, you can complete it for the last half of the month. So there's a lot of flexibilities. I would encourage you to play with this, these fields to see what happens uh, in your test databases. Closing date is exactly what it says. What's the closing period that you want to reconcile for? In this particular case, we said it would be February of 2022. The opening balance will automatically come in from the prior month statement. You can adjust your opening balance if you choose to. to uh, the, I don't recommend this after the first time, but if you should need to do it, you can do it from modifying opening balance, which is right here on the overflow menu. So let's take a look at, um, let me get back to that screen really quick. So we did the statement header. We have everything in here. You cannot post and close a statement if you have anything at all showing in this variance box. You, this must have a zero variance in there. So then we go to, once we have the statement header, we want to go over to the statement workbench. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a line. People use this in different ways. Generally, this would be the net of the transactions that came through your bank statement for that particular day. So in this case, I pulled out 228 of 22, and I just free typed into the, the amount box $500,000. Once I type in an amount here, I can put in a uh, credit or a debit. If it's a debit balance, It'll show up in this next box here of 500,000. It'll show up in that box. If this was a credit amount, then it would show up as a negative. And I can show you what that looks like. We would just type in a um, minus, well, it's 5 million. That's okay. On this line, it's going to say matched or not matched. You notice on this line, uh, line one, I've already matched some transactions. So how do we match transactions? Well, we want to retrieve all the transactions that are in the system. And these are unmatched transactions. So we just hit retrieve and we say um, whatever date to and from. Remember, even though you're reconciling the bank for, in this case, the month of February, that you may only want to do from and to, but if there are prior month transactions, you'll want to pull those in as well. When you hit retrieve, this is what will show up on the bottom and you can then select and match. So I can select lines and I can hit match and it will change the uh, matched amount for our statement. I can also pick transactions of certain types. I can sort this by type, which aids in the um, selection of the transactions that came in. In this case, I sorted it by type. So I've got AP, cash receipts, bank transfers, and bank adjustments. I can also filter it um, using the filter tab. Once I start um, checking off the items that are on that statement, um, and you'll notice I'm on line two. So if I check some of these and hit match, it's going to change line two, not line one. If I want to see what's matched, I can actually go to this button right here and it'll tell me what has been matched to the transactions in the line. So you can see here I put 500,000, but it said that there was a variance of 823. That's because I actually matched um, the transactions on our statement. Once everything is in balance, we can actually run a report to take a look at what our edit list looks like. And I can say show outstanding documents and we'll give this a minute for this to process. You're probably as impatient as I am on waiting for reports. This is what your edit list will look like. So it'll show me that I have two lines um, open. It will, this is on page one. On page two, it'll tell me that um, because I have a variance, it's going to book a variance. We don't obviously want to post that. And here you get your traditional reconciliation report, just like you would 
if you were reconciling in Excel or any one of the other methods that you may use. And down here, it tells you what's in the outstanding items list. So it'll actually give you all of those totals, which makes uh, a, a nice reconciliation report. Once everything is balanced and you are at a zero with your variance, at that point, then you would use the gears to go ahead and post the statement. Obviously, we're not in balance here, so we're not going to be able to post the statement. The, by posting the statement, everything locks in and uh, you actually have the beginning balances will just pull in the outstanding items when you add the next statement. From Sarah, so you are not necessarily importing the bank statement if you are set up correctly with the bank fee? Uh, you can in fact import from the bank. That requires the electronic interface. It works um, the same way. Let me get my uh, Epicor up again. You pull in the transaction so you can import the statement here. Um, and so you can actually import all the lines. You can do automatic matching by pulling in your statement and have everything. You can leave it sit out there until you can review it and make sure that everything imported the correct way. So it, and it behaves the same way. It just imports the transactions so you don't have to manually pull them in and mark them as matched. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today.